There's no doubt there's been a profound rise in the value of the dollar against some of the major trading currencies, the euro, Japanese yen, and as well some of the Asian currencies. This actually presents an enormous opportunity in terms of investing in this region, not only because we're going to see uh, greater consumer spending power within Asia, but also because a lot of European exporters are going to be much more competitive. And so I anticipate that that's going to create a lot of economic activity, uh, and I'm particularly bullish about European export market at the moment, particularly into the growing middle class here in Asia. You know, I think when you look at Asia as a whole, I would recommend people take a factor-based approach. And what do I mean by that? I mean really thinking beyond just the emerging markets as one asset class and really looking at which countries are going to benefit from a rising US dollar or a lower oil price, uh, which are more commodity dependent and which might suffer in the short term. And then thinking really along the long term, which uh, countries have a strong middle class, a growing middle class, uh, as well as good economic and, and political policies that are going to help uh, sustain growth over the long term. I think if you look at uh, in the short term, obviously uh, a country like India is going to be a great bene beneficiary of a stronger dollar and a weaker oil price. Obviously it, uh, it imports a lot of its oil uh, and therefore this has a direct impact on its uh, overall GDP. For a country where you might say that there's a, a, an issue, obviously Australia at the moment is having a problem because it's at the end of the super cycle in, uh, uh, in resources. Uh, the currency has obviously weakened quite considerably and you would say that the economy itself is not uh, more broadly diversified and so it becomes very uh, dependent on that resource super cycle uh, coming back into favour which doesn't look like it's going to happen in the near term. So that might be a country that, uh, uh, that suffers. The middle class, particularly in China, which is a growing consumer population uh, who are very focused on international brands, um, brands that are well recognized. And here I'm not talking about luxury brands, but brands of quality that would appeal to a growing middle class, I think will benefit in the long run. There's no doubt the Chinese economy is changing, but actually we shouldn't forget that it's been a major export market uh, to the US and Europe for many, many years, if not decades. And actually with a, um, with a strengthening US dollar, uh, and a lower oil price, uh, I think very strongly there will be a, a rise in uh, consumer spending in the US and that's actually going to be very good for China. So yes, it has its own middle class that is growing, uh, there's more domestic spending, there's more innovation and technology coming through, but let's not ignore the fact that China will be a net beneficiary of a resurgent US economy and if QE in Europe works over the long term and the uh, idea is to stimulate the economy and stimulate bank lending, uh, then in theory that can also be positive for China. So don't just look at China through the lens of the, the future model, but also traditionally what it's built itself on, which is a very, very strong export market.